Hello, I'm Linda Carnell. I'm the statewide coordinator for Project Learning Tree in West Virginia. Today we're going to talk about tree cookies. Tree cookies is activity 76 in the Project Learning Tree environmental education guide. So how do you tell the age of a tree? Does anyone know? More than likely you've heard about the rings and the rings represent how old that tree is. They're made up of spring wood and summer wood and it gives a look of a ring. So let's take a look at some of the cross sections that I have here. I've got three of them. You'll notice we've got a small one, a medium sized one, and a large one. Let's take a look at the small one first. You can see the definition of it. It's got some very small tight rings. As you move up to the middle one, you see there's also a lot of very tight rings. And you also see some scars. On the large one, if you look, the rings are very wide. So what does that tell us? When the rings are very narrow, that usually means that the growing conditions weren't favorable. So it, it could have meant a drought or an insect attack or something along those lines. This tree, the rings grew very wide, which means it had a good, good space to grow. Uh, it had all the water, sun, and nutrients that it needed to grow. This is also a water-loving type tree, so it really gets going. So when you're looking at these cross sections, they may look the same, but they're really very different. This is from a spruce tree, this is from a white oak, and this is from a cottonwood. Hardwoods usually grow slower and softwoods grow faster. So the spruce is considered a softwood and it would be fast growth. Yet if you notice, the rings are very tight. So when I just told you that usually tight rings mean that the growing conditions were not favorable, this one really represents it. In this small little light area, that's almost 25 years of growth in an area the size smaller than a quarter. So this tree was very suppressed. As you see it growing out, something happened in this area to make this tree grow. It was either growing against a hillside, showing the compressed wood here, or something, a tree fell down on the other side of it and all of a sudden it was exposed to sunlight. The white oak has some scars in it. This tree was grown in Hampshire County, right on the border of West Virginia and Virginia. And you see the rings are very tight, so it means it, it grew, but it wasn't a fast grower. And again, the large one, like I said, grew next to a stream. It had wonderful spacing, so it had really nice growth. Some of these rings are almost a half inch wide. And then, of course, as it gets towards the end, the rings get a little tighter. This cross section of this tree happened during our derecho several years ago. The tree was actually blown over. So you can see kind of the histories behind some of these trees. Now, if you look at all three of them, and you got a close up of many of them, which one would you think is the oldest, knowing that each ring counts for one year? So take a look at them again. You've got the small one, the medium sized one, and the large one. A lot of people will think that the large one is the oldest because it's the biggest, and that's not always true. Different trees have different growing conditions, and it depends on what happens in that tree's life. If you looked at this one and thought this one was the oldest, you're correct. This one is actually 114 years old. These two, the smallest one and the largest one, are actually just a few years apart. The largest one is only 52 years old. The smaller one is 62 years old. 
So actually, size really doesn't matter when it comes to tree cookies. So now we're going to take a look at how you can show what your cross section would look like. Sometimes we call this our slice of life. And what I'm going to do is have a couple of our students actually demonstrate what their cross sections would look like. And remember, each ring represents one year. So trees are very interesting. Sometimes we learn a whole lot about our forest by looking at trees and even their cross sections. The cross sections tell us a history about what has happened in that forest. You can use an activity like this and write about what has happened in your life. You can write sentences or paragraphs that talk about important times in your life and how this cross-section, your slice of life, represents that time. Here's an example of one of the cross-sections that a young lady in her 70s did to show how her slice of life played out. It showed that she was born in 1933. She had moved to a farm in Texas, uh, moved to Ohio. At 21, she was doing nursing and then got married. And she talked about her children as they came across because those were life events in her life and where she started a 4-H club and working at a nursing facility and then at 76 she was dealing with grandchildren. So let's take a look at some of our artwork that's been completed and take a look at some of our students slice of life. So for the first few years of my life I did some slow growing <laughs> and then I had a huge vacation out of the country and switched schools and had a huge growth spurt and I got a new puppy right after that which was really awesome and I had another huge growth spurt because right after that I went to high school and then things kind of grew evenly for a while and then I moved here to West Virginia. So today we've talked about cross sections or tree cookies. The activity that we just did is something that you could do at camps, at church camp, in schools, any place. I challenge you to go outside and find a tree that has been cut down or an old stump or even a piece of firewood and take a look and count how old that piece of wood was. I'm Linda Carnell, West Virginia Project Learning Tree.